Colossians 2, 13, 14, and 15. As far as I'm concerned personally, as you guys are just jumping on, it's early in the stream. Colossians 2, 13, 14, and 15 may be some of the highest passages of Scripture, New Testament, or the whole Bible. Here, God made you alive together with Christ. Thanks, Lord. Having canceled out the certificate of debt consisting of legal demands which were in force against us and were hostile to us, and this certificate he has set aside and completely removed it by nailing it to his cross. I have weeping at the front of the street. I go, Lord, what did you do? He goes, well, I took the certificate of debt consisting of all the legal demands which were enforced against you, Ken, and they were hostile to you. And this certificate I set to the side and completely removed it because I nailed it to my cross. Wow. In verse 15, and he had disarmed the rulers and the authorities, those supernatural forces of evil operating against us. He made a public display and example of them. He exhibited all these rulers of darkness and authorities as his captives. He had a triumphal procession, having triumph over them. You triumph, Lord. You triumph, Lord. Over all the authorities and the rulers of our dead, you triumphed over them. You triumphed over them, Lord. Through your blood and through the cross, The 
scripture says he disarmed them. That we're set against us in the kingdom, he disarmed them. Thank you, Lord. You took my certificate of death and mailed it to your cross. You took all the penalty of my sin and it was mailed with you to the cross. I have been a great cross. I am so very grateful. crucifixion and the day of his resurrection while in the spirit room Jesus destroyed death he destroyed the powers of darkness and every work of the enemy through the blood of his cross I mean dude if it's only half right it's something in this note says this implies that between the day of Jesus' crucifixion and the day of his resurrection in the spirit realm, Jesus destroyed death, the powers of darkness, and every work of the enemy through the blood and the cross. All the enemy's weapons have been stripped away from him, and now the church has the authority in Christ to enforce, to enforce his triumph, the triumph of Christ upon the dethroned rulers of this world. You took this certificate of my death and nailed it to your cross. Think about it, you got You took my certificate of death. The penalty of my sin and you nailed it to
the lyrics for you did not wait for me to draw near to you. And again, the same guy who wrote, I stand in all of you and people in Dusty, Mark Eltra, who said, and you did not wait for me to draw near to you. You closed yourself in the frail humanity. And you did not wait for me to cry out to you. But you let me hear your voice. But you let me hear your voice. We were 
to the Alienated 
came from him, and the hostiles were the Lord and King. He showed us his grace, he showed us his mercy. Now the crimson stood upon me. so far away from the Lord, alien and hostile toward God, and our flesh with the endemic nature. Man, this is good today. This is good, man. It's a little bit slower than normal, but I'm digging it. So we're heading in, heading, heading in. Make sure you got your Bible, your meeting device. Colossians 2.
Jesus canceled out every legal violation we had on our record. That's the first part of the title. The second part is Jesus disarmed the supernatural forces of evil that were working against us. Thanks for sharing. He made a public example of them having triumph over them through his cross. I want to say one more time. My girl is going to read the, uh, the topic of chapter 2. This is our title today. Jesus canceled out every legal violation we had on our record. Secondly, Jesus disarmed the supernatural forces of evil that were daily, hourly working against us. And then Jesus, our Savior and Redeemer, made a public example of them having triumphed over them through His blood and the cross. The theme of this chapter is Christ is supreme over all creation and over all of its systems. Paul refines this truth by showing how the salvation offered through Jesus is superior to false alternative systems. Paul specifically refutes several ideas, such as mixing Jewish legalism with your walk in the Lord, aestheticism or self-denial, and mysticism. Self-made religions of any kind are of no value in following Christ. In fact, such practices contradicted both the commands and the example of Jesus. True inner spiritual growth comes only by faith in Christ. The Keystone Scripture 13, 14, and 15. You made us alive together with Christ. Having canceled out the certificate of debt, consisting of the legal demands which were enforced against us and which were hostile to us, Lord, and this certificate. You set aside and completely removed it by nailing it to your cross. And when you had disarmed the rulers, Jesus, the authorities and those supernatural forces, the supernatural forces of evil operating against us, you made a public example of them, exhibiting them as captives in your triumphal procession. You triumphed over them through the blood and through the cross. Wow. For his sin. Father, we want to see Jesus. Jesus is all over. Paul's gospel is it's all about him. So give us wisdom and revelation and knowledge of you. Open the eyes of our understanding that we might see and understand your great salvation and exactly what it is that you put in this wonderful covenant you made with us and what our part is. We can have faith in it and respond to you righteously and rightly. Verse 1. I want you to know what a great conflict I have for you and those believers in Laodicea, and for as many as have never seen me face to face, that their hearts may be encouraged, being knit together in love, and attaining to all riches of the full assurance of understanding, the joy of salvation, to the knowledge of the mystery of God, both of the Father and of the Christ. This battle I am facing is huge, and I want you to know I do it for you, for all those at Laodicea, and for everyone else, even those who have never seen my face. I'm working hard to comfort and encourage them so that they will be knit together, that many hearts would become one through this love. I do it so they will be rich in understanding and have full knowledge of God's mystery, 
which is the anointed one himself. And the passion says, I wish you could know how much I have struggled for you and for the church in Laodicea and for the many other friends I've yet to meet. I am contending for you that your hearts will be wrapped in the comfort of heaven and woven together into love's fabric. This will give you access to all the riches of God as you experience the revelation of God's great mystery, Christ. For our spiritual wealth is like is in Him, like hidden treasure waiting to be discovered heaven's wisdom and endless riches of revelation knowledge. Our spiritual wealth. Our spiritual wealth is found in you. Hidden treasure waiting to be discovered. Hidden treasure waiting to be discovered. Our spiritual wealth is found in you. Jesus, the hidden treasure waiting to be discovered, Lord, yeah, yeah, yeah. our spiritual wealth is found in you, Jesus, the hidden treasures, they are there to be discovered, Lord, yeah. our spiritual wealth is found in you. Jesus, the hidden treasures, the hidden treasures are we discover it day by day. The hidden treasures of wisdom and the secret things of the Father's heart. Strike it out, you guys, yeah. Our spiritual wealth is found in you. Treasure is waiting, you're releasing hidden treasures. God is waiting, worship and wait before you look. There is the hidden treasure we discover as we worship and pray and wait before you. of wisdom and knowledge, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge, regarding the word and the purposes of God, the, the heart of love, the apostle Paul, he said, I'm doing this work for Colossae and the Laodiceans. I do this work of comfort and encouragement so they will be rich in understanding and have a full knowledge of God's mystery, which is the anointed one himself. For in Jesus, all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are concealed. Well, in him, all the treasures of wisdom and 
knowledge are safely kept. They're hidden there. You don't hear that again. For in Christ, all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are safely kept hidden there. In Him lie hidden all the mighty, untapped treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Jesus is the key that opens all the hidden treasures of God's wisdom and knowledge, where our spiritual wealth is in Him. so that no one will deceive you with persuasive but thoroughly deceptive arguments. For even though I am absent from you in the body, nevertheless I am with you in spirit, delighted to see your good dis- discipline as you stand shoulder to shoulder and form a solid front. And to see the stability of your faith in Christ, your steadfast reliance on Him. I only tell you this to warn you about those who would try and deceive you with their arguments. They seem plausible enough, but in the end they are false. Even though I cannot be there in the body, my spirit is with you, and I am happy to know of your good order and your solid commitment to the anointed one, our liberating king. And the passion says, I want you to know this so that no one will come and lead you into error through their persuasive arguments and cold words. Even though I'm separated from you geographically, my spirit is present there with you, and I am overjoyed to see how disciplined and deeply committed you are because you have such a solid faith in Christ. Be a good 
is overjoyed to see how disciplined and deeply committed you are because you have a son of faith in Christ Jesus. Rejoicing to see your discipline, your deeply committed heart to Christ the anointed one. He said, I am rejoicing again. Be there right now, but I am rejoicing in your discipline and your deeply committed heart to. Yes, we're 
philosophy and empty deception, pseudo-intellectual babble, according to the tradition and musings of mere men, following the elementary principles of this world, rather than following the truth and the teachings of Christ. Don't let others spoil your faith and joy with their philosophies, their wrong and shallow answers built on men's thoughts and ideas, instead of on what Christ has said. For in Christ there is all of God in a human body. So you have everything when you have Christ, and you are filled with God. Through your union with Christ, He is the highest ruler with authority over every other power. Beware that no one distracts you or intimidates you in their attempt to lead you by pretending to be full of wisdom when they're filled with endless arguments of human logic. For they operate with humanistic clouded judgments, judgments based on the mindset of this world system, and not the anointed truths of the anointed one. For he is the complete 
the fullness of deity living in human form. And of our own completeness, is, and our own completeness is now found in Him. We are completely filled with God as Christ's fullness overflows within us. He is the head of every kingdom and authority in the universe. I'm going to sing the sound of You see people in the world that deceive believers are operating with humanistic views. They have total judgments based on the mindset of this world system. But now we believe in the anointed truth of the anointed one. We're walking in the anointed truth of the anointed one. We are walking in the anointed truth of the word of the anointed one. We're not like the world. I said, we are not like the world. Humanistic, cloudy judgment based on this world system. We are in the world, but we're not of the world. Because this is what we believe. Oh, we believe the anointed truths of the anointed one. But to the living end, oh, we believe these anointed truths of the anointed one. Jesus Christ, oh, we're living a life. Based on anointed truths that come from our anointed Savior, Jesus. Let's hear it one more time. For deceived believers or unsaved people, they're operating with humanistic and clouded judgments. It's based on the mindset of this world system. Not I. For we're living our life in faith based on the anointed fruits of the kingdom of the anointed one. And then you, you are also circumcised with the circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ buried with him in baptism, in which you also were raised with him through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. In him, you were also circumcised, set apart by a spiritual act performed without hands. And this is the anointed one's circumcision. He cuts you off from the sinfulness of your flesh, thank God. You were buried with him beneath the waters of the ceremonial washing called baptism. <laughs> and then you were raised up with him by faith in the resurrection power of the heavenly Father. This resurrection power of God is what brought Jesus back from the dead, the glory of the Father. And check this, through our union with Him, we have experienced circumcision of heart. All of the guilt and the power of sin has been cut away. It is now extinct because of what Christ, the Anointed One, has accomplished for us. For we've been buried with Him into His death. And to his death, where we've been buried with him. And to his death, now we are raised with him. For we believe in God's resurrection power, we've been buried with him. And to his death, our baptism into his death also means we have been raised with him. Resurrection power, 
Canceled out every legal violation we had on our record and the old arrest warrant that stood to indict us. He erased it all. He erased it all. Our sins, our stained soul. He deleted it all, and they cannot be retrieved. Everything we once were in Adam has been placed onto his cross and nailed permanently there as a public display of cancellation. I would suggest to take down a page for you. Verse 14, just one more time. Check this guy. He canceled out every legal violation we had on our record and the old arrest warrant that stood to indict us, he erased it all. He erased it all, our sins, our stained soul. He deleted it all, and they cannot be retrieved. Everything we once were in heaven has been placed onto his cross and nailed permanently there as a public display of cancellation. Say, the guy is just following the last couple of verses for today. 
get us so fed in. I was reading this to Carla, I just started weeping. He disarmed the principalities for me. They were tearing us up in an epidemic nature, unsaved, not filled with the Spirit. We were getting torn up in it. And he came into it. He disarmed the principalities and powers. And this patient translation. He canceled out every one of my little violations. I had so much on my report. My record was there, oh, you canceled out every one of my little violations. So much in my record there. Yeah, but you can't see that every one of my legal violations. who once ruled over us, Lord. Those who had overpowered us. We were like captives of war. And when you put them on display to the world to show them, to show your victory over them by means of the cross. And when you had disarmed the rulers and authorities, those supernatural forces of evil operating against me, you made a public example of them. Exhibiting them as captives in your triumphal procession, rose, risen from the dead, you, you made a public show and spectacle of them, having triumphed over them through the blood of the cross. In this way, God took away Satan's power. Took away his power to accuse you of sin 
how God openly displayed to the whole world Christ triumphed at the cross, where your sins were all taken away. Then Jesus made a public spectacle, yes, a public spectacle of all the powers and principalities of darkness, stripping away from them every weapon and all their spiritual authority and power to accuse us. And by the power of the cross, Jesus led them around as prisoners in a procession of trial. He was not their prisoner. They were his. And the passions note. The Aramaic can be translated, having put off his body, Jesus stripped principalities and powers and shamed them. This implies that between the day of crucifixion and the day of resurrection, while in the spirit realm, Jesus destroyed death, the powers of darkness, and every work of the enemy through the blood of his cross. All the enemy's weapons have been stripped away from him, and now the church has authority in Christ to enforce his triumph upon the dethroned rulers of this world. Well, yeah. Hallelujah. Lord, you took away the Savior's power to accuse God. And you may have been displayed to the powers of God. It's the power of your blood, sacred, holy blood. We are not ashamed of the gospel for this reason you made a show of them openly. You gave us power and authority. The kingdom of darkness, because of your blood and because of your cross, Lord, because of the blood. Because of the cross, because of the
moved into a new place. I think it's realms of heaven, realms of the anointing. Uh, it's a prophetic word that I got. Um, I had it around December 15th. My son-in-law, Jim Stern, really confirmed it on December 29th. He goes, what did you, you said you can cross it. Over. He says, yeah, people want to just stay planted where you can't do things. time to move to a new ground and to a new level in the Lord. And so Jim said, I'm teaching on that too. He says, I'm okay, man, I'm listening. So understand, I think we're moving at a good level. I believe God speed this word from the old timers years ago. And God speed for all of his purposes. They would sign their letters that way. In their commentaries, that way God speed on all of your missions and purposes of God in your life this year. So just take that. This is the hour and the year that we're crossing over into new levels of the Lord, new levels of his anointing, and new ground for Jesus. Hey, kid, that was really good. All right, we'll see you tomorrow night, uh, for sure on Thursday, part two of Colossians 2. God bless you guys.